Welcome to another installment of Trinity to Go, a ministry of Trinity Lutheran Church here in downtown Bismarck. I'm Pastor Lee Herberg, and our time together is for the second Sunday of Advent, December 4th, 2022. And as we begin our time together today, we do so in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We begin our time together with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Beloved, now is the time to wake from sleep. Let us confront our sins and confess them to the one who is merciful and just. God of new beginnings, we confess that we have not welcomed your holy reign. We have strayed from your paths. We prepare for war instead of peace. We dishonor one another in your creation. Purify us with your refining fire and set us again on your way of love, that we may bear fruit worthy of repentance and welcome your coming among us. Amen. People of God, a new thing is growing in our midst, a tender branch, a living sign. By water and the Spirit, you are joined to this wonder. You have put on Christ, and your sins have been washed away. Rejoice in the way of the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, nurture our growth as people of repentance and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Gospel reading for today is recorded in the Gospel of St. Matthew, the third chapter. Just before Jesus begins his public ministry, John the Baptist appears, calling people to mend their ways and speaking of a powerful one who is to come. We hear the gospel this day. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him and all the region along the Jordan, for they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers! Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, and will gather his wheat into the granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This weekend I'm leaving for Moorhead, Minnesota to attend Concordia's annual Christmas concert with my daughter and her husband. Now I've been to Fargo many, many, many times, and so I know the way well. You could say the path there is well worn. I always know when I'm getting close to Fargo because right when you get past Mapleton, those billboards appear and you know you're almost there. And I always look for that one billboard that has been there for years on the south side of I-94 as you're going east. It's a very simple billboard. It just says, be nice. So I'm reminded when I get to Fargo, be nice. 
But there's a couple other signs that change quite frequently along the way. They're those signs that are put up by the Department of Transportation. You know those electronic LED signs that you see in different places. The first one is by Cleveland, North Dakota. And the next one is after you get through Valley City. And I remember last year when I went to Moorhead to the concert, I remembered what those signs said because they grabbed my attention in a humorous way. The first one by Cleveland said, Santa sees you when you're speeding. Buckle up. I thought that was clever and it kind of related to the time of the year. And the second one by Valley City I thought was just as clever. Buckle up. What's ho ho holding you back? Another one that I thought was really well done. Those signs came across as humorous, but they were meant to be taken seriously. Just as I'm sure that simple one before you get to Fargo is be nice. It's simple, but it's meant to be taken seriously. <coughs> Excuse me. Today we encounter John the Baptist. He's on the side of the road too with a sign. But I wonder if he's taken seriously. After all, how can someone who is dressed in camel's hair, someone who eats locusts and wild honey, how can someone like that be taken seriously? I kind of wonder. I think, though, that John the Baptist is being very serious today. He wants our attention. I think that's kind of part of our gospel today, when we see what John the Baptist says to us. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. Well, like I said, that path for me to Fargo is well-worn. I know it well. There's another big group of paths, I think, that are getting well-worn these days. For example, the paths to the mall. I think they're getting well-worn these days. Paths that take us where we want to go. This time of the year, there's a lot of those paths calling us to go here or go there. And those paths we know well, they're well worn. And so today we have this other person kind of standing in the ditch beside those well worn paths, saying to you and I, where are you going? And what do you hope to find? John the Baptist is telling you and I today to repent, to maybe think a little bit about those well-worn paths that you and I travel this time of year. Will we really find there what we're looking for as we do our shopping, as we do our preparing to get ready for this season? Or are we just kind of engaged in another reenactment of the same thing? After all, like I said, those paths are well worn. Advent is a time when you and I are supposed to kind of stop what we're doing, think a little bit, and maybe then reframe our way of thinking and look at what's really important at this time of year. John the Baptist is saying to you and me today, not only repent, but make straight the path for the Christ child. What path will the Christ child have to take to get to us? A roundabout way? Or will we make that path straight? 
After all, where is Christ coming? Where is he going? Christ is coming into your heart and mine. John the Baptist today is talking about a different kind of path. He's talking about a path that goes straight to our heart. That's the path we should focus on at this time of year in Advent. In all our preparations that you and I engage in this time of year, we are to take time to prepare a place for Christ. It's really quite simple. The path is straight. The path is straight to our heart. And so, in the midst of all those well-worn paths we're traveling right now, you and I are invited to stop and make a place, prepare a place for Christ to dwell. Maybe that's simply in just being quiet for a while, being silent, thinking and reflecting about this time of the year, how dark it is, how cold it is, and how much we need the warmth of the Word and the light of Christ's love. And then make a place for that in life, in heart, in soul, and mind. Let Christ dwell there. Let Christ and his love for you warm you today. Let Christ and his hope for you warm your heart today as well. And then who knows, as we continue in our journey to the manger, we may find that those other paths are less important. And in so doing, we may find more life. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, you know your people. You know we travel many paths these days, preparing for this thing or that thing, buying this gift or that gift. Those paths that we travel today are well-worn. Today, Lord, we pray that you would invite us to stop and pause. Help us to prepare a place for you in our heart, in our soul, in our mind. Lord, at this time of year, help us to remember to welcome one another as you have welcomed us. Nurture ministries of hospitality and care in this community. We pray for people who are homebound today, hospitalized today, or struggling with the gift of life in body, mind, or spirit today. Especially Don, Mike, Annette, Jan, Jim, Elizabeth, Melissa, and Kathy. Lord, you embrace all who have died, trusting in your promises, and we give thanks for their witness. Be with the families of Annie Leno and Dee Dee Kapsch today, Sustain us in hope until we are united with them in the joy of your eternal presence. Continue to hear our prayers, O Lord, as you have taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I'd like to apologize for my voice today. I've been struggling with a head cold the past few days, as maybe many of you have as well. It's one of the gifts of the season that we don't look forward to getting, but that's how it is. But I do want to take a moment today to thank you for your ongoing generosity here at Trinity. Also want to thank everyone who gathered last night after worship to help prepare to decorate the sanctuary and our Peace Chapel for this season of Advent and Christmas. The nativity scene is now up facing 4th Street. Um, drive by at night and have a look at the nativity as we enter into this holy season. In the sanctuary and in the rest of our facility, we have reminders of Christmas, reminders of light and love everywhere. And we thank everyone who helped 
put that together for us for another year of celebrating the birth of Christ. And so I pray that you all remain safe in your travels and your going here and there. And like re me, remember to take some time and be quiet and ponder upon the gift of gifts that again comes to us this time of year. Until we meet again, I'm Pastor Lee, and take care and now receive God's blessing. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. God's face shine on you and be gracious to you. God continue to look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great week. Amen.